Hey everybody, this is Jasmine Banks back again talking about the new show called Bush Girls, which is about four women in wheelchairs and all the nonsense that they have to go through in life despite the disability. So this episode is about dancing and sex, uh, two of my favorite subjects. And uh, one of the four main women, uh, she was a dancer and a hip-hop artist who was on her way, signed and all, and then she was in a car accident. But she never uh, stopped dancing in that, yes, she's paralyzed, she can no longer walk, but she uh, does what's called wheelchair dancing and even has a wheelchair dance troupe. Um, one of the women that she's taken under her wings, a girl of 19 years old, has be, you know, became a member of the dance troupe. And <clears throat> one of the things I had said initially that was my concern about this show was, is this really a docu-series that we're really following real people that were really friends beforehand um, versus one of those reality shows that the friends were cast and manufactured um, to play these roles. Well, in this episode, they are showing older pictures, and I'm not saying you know that they wouldn't manufacture that, but it, it does give more credibility uh, every time they show old pictures of uh, these friends together in these pictures from a few years ago, it helps out a lot. It gives you more confidence that um, they're not faking it. Uh, so anyway, it, it you know, I have to say the dancing story each and every time really pulls at my heartstrings a lot um, because I wanted to be a dancer and I lost that ability. And, it, you know, when the, um, the two women were talking about uh, in fact, no, it was three. Three of the women were talking about, you know, what it was to lose that dancing ability. But two of them specifically were talking about every time they see themselves on video dancing, it, it's really, it's very difficult for them to watch. And I can definitely understand that, not a doubt in my mind. Um, in my case, sadly, because my parents just were not big on a camera. They just weren't. I mean... They, of course, got us all in embarrassing stuff, but, you know, when it came to dance recitals or plays or things like that, not as much stuff as would be nice. So I literally have no home movies, no pictures, nothing of me dancing at all. Um, so I, I guess there was a part of me sitting there thinking, you know, it's it's one thing to lose the ability. It, it That's huge beyond huge. Um, it's another thing to also then lose all the, you know, the tangible memories from that, uh, from that delight that was in your life. Um, and as much as it would be painful to look back, because in a certain way it's painful to look at home movies of me when I am running around and hanging on a jungle gym or whatever it is I'm doing that's physical, you know, there's a certain kind of pain, but there's a certain kind of joy to be able to go back in time and, and sort of relive it because your memories do fade. And and that's the thing that always upsets me. Every time there's something I don't recall clearly about dancing when I was young, it, it feels almost how people describe when they've lost a loved one and then the memories start to fade. It's sort of like a death all over again. So I don't know which is worse, having you know the memories on film and being able to look back at them and feel the way you feel each time, sometimes happy, sometimes just sentimental, sometimes traumatized, um, or not to have it at all, nothing to, you know, you've lost everything. I don't know, um, you know, because maybe you eventually just move forward to the point that it doesn't exist. Uh, I don't know that that would ever happen because every time I hear music, I constantly think of dancing. Like there's every moment of the day somewhere dancing is entering my head. But it is an interesting thing to think of, which is worse. And and what are the real losses in a physical disability? Is it the loss of the physical ability or is it the loss of the dreams that you had for yourself? Um, and I think that's an important thing that we all have to recognize we all have dreams goals come out of those dreams 
Um, and what happens if they have to change? Can you re-divert that passion that you have into a different one? Can you, you know, make it fuel a different one or make you think out of the box? Of how can you still put everything into something else and feel satisfied from it? Um, I would love to hear people's thoughts on that. And the other thing that went on in the show is, of course, there was the t- typical Sex in the City scene, so to speak, um, where the four women, um, well, it was the three women and, and the, the young girl having, you know, discussions about sex and, oh, well, you know, they're able to do this and that and the other thing. And, of course, there's part of me thinking, why do I care to hear about this? I could care less if I know they can have sex. You know, it's not like in the car accident they lost their vagina. I mean, I, I know that they can have sex. Although, even if that happens, where there's a will, there's a way, I'll have to say. Um, but then I realized, hmm, your average walking person somehow does think that people in wheelchairs or anyone disabled in any major way cannot have sex or cannot find anyone to have sex with them. Uh, it's more that they cannot have sex. And so I thought, no, that, that that I can't think of a better place to have a sex in the city scene where you have the four women talking about, yes, this is what we like. Yes, this is what we do. Um, and I guess just like sex in the city itself presented a different view of women to men because men always viewed women as people who disliked sex and found out, oh, au contraire. Um, I can relate to this in that even when I, you know, people were always shocked that I had a dating life. They were shocked that someone would want to be with me considering I could never have sex. I'm like, seriously? Because I wasn't aware that I couldn't have sex. You know, shocking news to me. And of course it wasn't true. Of course I could have sex. Um, after I, you know, got pregnant out of wedlock when I was 19 years old and, you know, I got pregnant by accident. I remember telling this story to this woman and I said, yeah, it was really difficult to be in the middle of college and to get pregnant out of wedlock. I had really strict parents and, you know, but it was something that happened to me and I tell her this whole story Um, because people love to come up and ask you all sorts of personal things and she heard I had a son and so then she hears the story and she says to me, hmm, that's, you know, that's such a touching and inspirational story, but if you don't mind me asking, you know, with your disability and all, um, in order to get pregnant, did you have to be artificially inseminated? And I'm not sure exactly what part of pregnant by accident includes artificial insemination, and I really wanted to ask her that, you know, like, what was going on in her head with, I don't know, was I at the gynecologist for a pap smear and he used the wrong stick? I mean, I I don't know what happens to people. Um, Maybe she had an aneurysm and just could not think straight. I don't know. But, and, you know, I've even had people ask me, how did I find someone to want to have sex with me? Uh, You know, because I'm in a wheelchair. And I've had people say to me, um, you know, it was unfair of me to give my my children a mother who's in a wheelchair, and I'm like, hmm, well, that's kind of chicken and egg theory there. But they don't need, they don't seem to mind having a mother in a wheelchair. Um, they, you know, if you had to pick mom in a wheelchair or a neglectful mother who might beat me, I don't know. Um, it, it's they just don't have an issue with that I'm in a chair. Um, But these are the things that people do think. And so, you know, it's important in the show um, that these women are talking about that. And, you know, showing how normal they are, how normal they think. The fact that there's the one who just thinks about sex all the time, constantly talks about it. Very normal woman. Very normal in every way, whether she's a woman or person with a disability it's totally normal I do love the fact that they were talking about because they're paralyzed how um, the erogenous zones will relocate and that that's something you know that you need to explain to a new lover um, and I'm thinking God as if men weren't confused enough as to where the spots are now to find out that they relocate um, <laughs> but you know the, the interesting thing about that 
is able-bodied women often have the most difficult time having a lover find said spots and that lover has a hard time communicating with the woman about it to get necessary information to find the spot and often the woman ends up faking it to just go okay fine 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 and communication and, and pleasure does not reach any fulfillment now the opposite is quite true in most disabled relationships and that doesn't mean two disabled people let's just talk you know one minimum one disabled person in the relationship um, they tend to have much better communication and it seems to me especially when you're talking the combination of one able-bodied person and one person with a disability often the person who's able-bodied is very curious about this new toy and and the new toy being the disabled person is very open about having to just discuss their body anyway um, that they've lost a lot of inhibitions so they don't mind pointing out well if you do this and you do this and you twist this that way and you bend it that way um, it's you know these couples start out with a better communication and because of the curiosity and that in itself can kind of be sexy they seem to have a lot better sex and a lot better communication and a bigger bond in their relationship because they're not busy being insecure around one another and, and you know just not communicating there's there's a lot of communication and in a way in, in certain aspects the relationships are deeper um, than if there were just two able-bodied people I think there's something to learn from uh, from that for sure um, and the other thing that concerns me a little bit with the show, and I've said this before, is this this show about women in wheelchairs, or is this show about paralyzed women in wheelchairs? And this is not to down anybody. Um, this is simply to, you know, make sure the audience understands what they're supposed to be learning. And I say this as someone who's not paralyzed, who's always... Um, you know, everyone always assumes that I am paralyzed because that's the way we're training society to think about people in wheelchairs is either they're old or they're paralyzed. Clearly, I'm not 90 or, um, you know, I'm looking good for 90. Um, but, but I can't tell you how many people, most people I've encountered, always think I'm paralyzed. Even when they see that I move, <laughs> they think I'm paralyzed because I'm in a wheelchair. And when I explain to them, that I'm not, they're shocked. Um, and so I really, really hope that somehow this show addresses that issue that being a, in a wheelchair is not just about that. There's more to being in a wheelchair than just paralysis. Um, I think it's, it's important because also a lot of the ADA laws are built around people who are paralyzed in a wheelchair. Uh, the heights of countertops, um, where door handles and light switches should be. When I moved into my apartment, because my disability is totally different. Yes, I'm in a wheelchair, but I can't reach the same places that someone who has their upper body, you know, fully intact, can reach. Um, and you know, the landlords have not always been accommodating or or willing at first to make things lower than the standard. Um, because they said, well, you know, we don't want you to get hurt by lowering it further. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to get hurt if I don't have things meeting my needs. But they would still force me to sign waivers that I wouldn't sue them if I get hurt in order for them to accommodate what I need. Or they would make me hire someone else to, and pay for it myself when they were supposed to do it for free. So this is where I think a lot of people are confused on that issue. Um, and, and I think this show has a great opportunity that even if they don't bring in somebody um, that is not not a paralyzed person in a wheelchair because you know maybe these girls just don't know someone like that but if it could be addressed by them even talking about it it would actually be helpful to a huge part of the disabled community um, you know I even was on a date once it was going kind of nicely and the guy and I 
were sitting there looking at the stars, and um, I was sitting on his lap, and it was just, you know, and he was being a nice gentleman, like, you know, we hadn't even kissed yet, we were just talking, talking, and um, all of a sudden, I feel his hand on my ass, squeezing it, but he's still talking to me like nothing is happening. Clearly, you know, if he wanted to try and do that, normally one looks to a certain way or says something, there's some indicator that they want you to know that they're doing this. And I thought, you know, I bet he thinks I'm paralyzed because it's like he's trying to sneak a grab. So I just wait, and I just keep talking, and I wait to see where this is going to go. And then eventually he takes his other hand and he starts to touch my legs, and you know, just above my ankles, and he says, oh, because you can't feel a thing, right? And so I just smiled and I said, oh no, I can feel every single thing everywhere on my body. His hand flew off of my butt so fast. He's like, oh, I am so sorry. And I'm like, you thought you would get away with sneaking a grab, didn't you? He's like, I did. I'm so sorry. I'm really so sorry. And... Well, that relationship obviously didn't go very far. Uh, I still thought it was very entertaining myself, uh, you know. But again, it, you know, part of it stemmed from his famous question. But I thought all people in wheelchairs were paralyzed. So, at least it would help other people's dating lives if they could bring some enlightenment enlightenment to this issue. <laughs> um, but let me know your thoughts on that, you know you know, what was your percep you know, what are your perceptions of people in wheelchairs? Are they all paralyzed? Or, you know, what did you think before I did this blog? I'd be very curious to hear back from everybody on many of these issues and bring up other issues. I'd love to hear from you, your questions, your comments and your thoughts on the show and other issues related to disability. Thanks so much.